Yes, and my mobile phone shows it's 10 o'clock Central European time. So it's time for us to start. Uh, hello and welcome, everybody. I really appreciate it that you took your time and are willing to spend a couple of minutes with us with Amcon. Uh, my name is Miloslav, and I will be guiding you through this uh, presentation of our brand new product. I hope you will be able to understand my Czech version of English. I always say that because, but you know, my limited vocabulary, I hope so, will be welcomed by those who, for, for whom the English is not the, the mother tongue. So let's hope you will be able to understand. So it is my big pleasure to introduce you the brand new, the brand new member of our Volute Dewatering Presses family. And this one we call Volute Duo. And I will explain, of course, later on why we call it like that. Uh, just a few words uh, regarding to our webinar organization. I will keep you all muted so we don't get any sound disruption on the background. Uh, for your questions, please use Q and A's. There should be a button available for you. So please hit this uh, uh, Q and A button and type your questions. I will do my best to answer those at the end of the webinar. But of course, you are always welcome to, to send us your question via email or give us a call. You can find all our contact information at our website, which is www.amcon-eu.com. So it is always good to start with some agenda. Yeah, can I switch? Yeah, good. Uh, just to give you company background, but no worries. I will not spend much time with the history and all this kind of stuff around. Uh, uh, I should definitely explain you and tell you something about the Volute Duo, the classic one, the, the, the one many of you know pretty well, but some of you may not know it, it uh, in, in detail. So I think it's worth it to spend some time and explain some key features and uh, I would say fundament of the design of the machine. And then of course, uh, I would like to talk about the new uh, volute, nah, not not valued. You know, sorry, there's such a such a typo in, in this slide, a horrible typo. Uh, talking about the design, function, maintenance, and some real life experience. So let's jump to the some kind of background of the company. So uh, Amcon is a Japanese company founded in 1974 in Tokyo, Japan, by Mr. Sasaki. And the company started as a as kind of service provider to small wastewater treatment plants. And as you know, uh, the sludge handling was and probably always will be a very important part of the wastewater treatment plant processes. In those days, there was no really small scale, easy to use, easy and cheap to operate technology. So Amcon looked around and tried to develop something. And uh, so in early 90s, the first volute dewatering press was introduced to the world. And actually, Amcon switched from being the service provider or operator to actually original equipment manufacturer, which was, of course, a big move. And, uh, and company is now focusing on developing, producing, volute dewatering presses and thickeners, I should not forget as well. Uh, so we actually proudly say that the decentralized sludge dewatering is part of our company's uh, DNA. Uh, we have been showing that uh, there is no need to move a huge amount of sludges around the cities, around the country, around the regions to transport undewatered sludge to the big centralized uh, wastewater treatment plan where the sludge can be uh, dewatered. No, it's not needed. You can have small, easy to use, easy to operate, cheap to operate dewatering press, and you can dewater the sludge at the place where it is created. So this is just to give you the background. 
And here it's kind of nice picture pictures we took, we put together to show you kind of lineup in time, uh, having some 30 years of experience. So you can see how those, you know, volume dewatering presses were looking uh, back in time. And uh, of course, you, you, you know the business, you are all coming from waste water treatment process, and you know that the new technology never makes it easy uh, in the super conservative world as the wastewater treatment is. So some people still think that the only uh, dewatering technology is a centrifuge or the bell press, right? You know, of course it's changing, fortunately, but sometimes you can still, uh, you can still hear this. We have been using belt presses, so we will continue using belt presses and it's not easy to break it. You have to show it and prove it many, many times that, you know, there's other technologies available, which might be much more convenient than those which are considered to be classic or normal. So, uh, volume managed to, to find its weight. And, you know, I am using kind of two proofs of success. The one would be that I can say, yeah, we have thousands of uh, applications, installations around the globe. And the second proof is, uh, let's call it more, more bizarre. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you do something right, there will be always somebody who will copy what you do. So another proof of, of volume being successful product is the number of, if I should call it more diplomatic way, number of uh, surprisingly very similar dewatering presses uh, offered by others, uh, other manufacturers. So it is a kind of clear proof that the technology works, that there is a very value, customers, customers are listening. Of course, uh, the original volute patent has expired. So basically all those copies available or the markets are not illegal. It is absolutely okay. Of course, another story is if somebody is trying to cheat the customer, like selling, offering volute default, the watering press because the volute is only one. And this is the one produced by, by Amcon. Uh, you know, we have never really compromised our standards and we don't plan to, to do so. We always play, uh, pay attention to the right quality material selection, uh, components quality selection. So we always cooperate with the good quality brands to equip our machines with the parts we don't produce ourselves. Processing quality is very important. I will be talking about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, about the fixed and moving rings. And those are you know, key, key components of the machine. And it's, uh, you can do a many shortcuts to, to create you know, cheaper uh, version of, of, of the machine. You can do that, but we don't do that. So every uh, ring we produce, it is touched by our hands many times. We pay attention to the hardness of the steel. We always machine the edges of those rings. We are paying attention to flattening those rings because all of these steps play very important role in the efficiency of dewatering and what is most important, the, the long of the, of the service life the machine is going to provide to the customer. Then of course, you know, machine configuration, uh, for example, uh, will see that there is a screw inside the cylinder in this machine. And you know what kind of screw to use? You know, we have a couple of types of, of screws we have developed in the time. Are we going to use the tapered screw? Are we going to use the screw with a straight shaft? Is the shaft going to be thick or thin? Uh, and what about the screw itself? What about the pitches? Are we going to use equal pitches or unequal pitches? So we are very flexible and we are trying to address the concrete need of the customer and the sludge specification with our machine setup. It is very important. Uh, related auxiliaries, of course, we need to be always ready to supply what is needed, like uh, 
uh, powder or liquid polymer makeup systems, uh, sludge pumps, different sensors uh, available for automation or remote monitoring, uh, uh, conveyors, of course, and things like that, which, you know, just things around the sludge dewatering we need to, we need to supply. Flocculation. I say that the flocculation is the key. If you cannot flocculate the sludge well, you cannot dewater it well. So the knowledge around the flocculation is very important. That's why we have our daughter company called ChemNG, and we supply our chemicals, our polymers, so coagulants, flocculants to our customers. We have our own lab because it's very much needed in order to be able to analyze the sludge, to analyze the results, to find the right flocculant, to, write the, to find the right dosage, and therefore optimize the cost for the customers. So this slide is very important for me. I think it is very important for our, our, our company that this is the base what we stand for. We don't want to compromise the quality of what we do. And uh, now let's talk more about uh, what is the volume about, uh, because explaining this has an important role to, to introducing the new machine to you. Again, as I said, I know many of you know it pretty well, but some, some of you maybe not. So now you can see the, the heart of the machine. It is a cylinder, as we call it. Uh, you can see the sludge inlet, uh, top right. Uh, so this is where the flocculated sludge goes into the cylinder. You can see that the first section of the cylinder, we call it thickening zone. This is the zone where almost no pressure is applied on the flocculated sludge. And the filtrate has kind of very easy way to escape the cylinder. Uh, and then there is a dewatering zone where, where more pressure pressure is applied again by different things you know so uh, the, the screw uh, at the end has unequal pitches so the space between the pitches gets 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 shorter and shorter so therefore more pressure is applied uh, if tapered screw is applied again it means that there's going to be less space at the end of the cylinder so again it means more pressure so this is what we call dewatering zone when the dewatering is happening and at the end of the machine, we have an end plate and the sludge cake is actually coming out of the cylinder at this place. You can see the motor and the gearbox. So this is the principle, this is the heart of the machine, the cylinder. And this was the, the key thing. This was the invention. Uh, you maybe you noticed on the first slide that uh, we, we have the slogan like from revolution to evolution. And we consider this actually to be the revolution. This was happening, you know, at early 90s. Uh, it is a very simple, very elegant uh, mechanical filter created by the combination of fixed and moving rings. You can see those rods, which create some kind of frame of the cylinder, which is fixed, supported by those fixed rings. But between those fixed rings, there is a moving ring, which is kind of following the, the path, the way of the screw coming in the middle of the cylinder. So those moving rings are actually lifted by the, by the pitch of the screw, and then they go down. So compared to other screw, screw presses, which are using different type of mesh around the, the cylinder, this solution has this kind of uh, advantage that those moving rings are moving, which means that actually they can provide, as we call it, self-cleaning function. Therefore, we don't need a huge amount of water for rinsing the, the cylinder to prevent cylinder from blockage. It is not needed. The rinsing water we are using, it's not even pressurized. It is a normal tap pressure, uh, pressure, pressure water. So this principle is really elegant. And I think this is the thing which makes the volute volute. <laughs> Let's put it this way. So what are the pros of volute uh, dewatering press? Self-cleaning function low RPM, low vibration, low noise. So really, we are talking about a couple of RPMs in a minute. 
So this is a slow speed operation. And as you know, it's always, if you have a high speed, uh, like, you know, technology like centrifuge, for example, if something is going to happen, it might happen really quickly. And it might be destroying a lot of things around, which low speed uh, machinery gives you a lot of time and a lot of warnings, you know, well in advance that something is happening. So you have time. It is a big advantage of, of in general, low speed operating technology. And those, you know, things like vibrations and low noise comes together with that, obviously. It is absolutely convenient for 24 seven operation. Full automation is available as nowadays it's sometimes needed. Low energy consumption, this is a big, big benefit of the volume dewatering pressing. As I already mentioned, low rinsing water consumption, no pressurized water needed and low maintenance cost in time. However, if somebody tells us that there is one single technology, which is the, the, the best in the world, the, the bulletproof and whatever, of course, it's not true, right? There are always challenges every technology has. And what are the typical challenges for volume dewatering press? It is, it is a fibrous sludge. So the sludge, which has you know, fiber content like 25, 30% and more, and the sludge with a higher inorganic content, abrasive, abrasive uh, sludge, those are the things which, uh, which are really challenging uh, volume dewatering press. What can happen? Uh, we can bulk the cylinder by uh, highly fibrous sludge. You can see the top picture. Or especially if the sludge is, you know, uh, bit high inorganic, you know, uh, abrasive content, you can see extensive wear of the moving rings and the, and the screw, which of course shortens the lifetime of the machine and more often you need to make the overhaul. So now it's time to show you the Volu Duo, the brand new one member of our, our family. And uh, there were actually three main things which were driving us as Amcon people to develop the new uh, dewatering press. Uh, the first one, was the, the maintenance cost reduction. But this was not the main one, honestly speaking. This is kind of side product of that. I will explain. No performance deterioration in time. Again, very important. But I would say the, the, the right one, the, main, the most important one was the binder application range. You know, something which is really trying to address those challenges and solve them. So the sludges with the high with the higher fiber content, which you can find you know many times in uh, in many industrial applications or or the application where you work with the digested sludges, there's a lot of fibers. So these were the three things we were really looking for and uh, trying to build the machine accordingly, using the same principle of volute but applied a bit differently. And the next slide is going to show you what is the difference. And now I, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you can see the animation because it's quite important. So things should be moving on your screen. I hope it is happening. Uh, on the left, we can see uh, the normal, let's call it classic volute. And on the right side, you can see you can see the new volume duo. And of course, obviously, just for the first side, you can see the difference, right? So the, the classic volute has one screw, which is running in, a, in the cylinder. The red circle, it represents the point of contact between the screw and the rings and the moving rings. And of course, as you know, Everybody knows that. If there is a contact between metal and metal, it always you know, creates some friction and wear of the material. Even if we really pay attention to selection of our materials, 
obviously those are not endless when it comes to lifetime and somewhere is happening at the same time you have only one screw in one cylinder right so this is the challenge for the fiber sludge and it's quite easy to block the cylinder even if we spec up the machine we will apply more power for motor even if we select the right screw for for those complicated sludges even if we equipped the machine with the special moving rings equipped as we call them rib rings even that it's it must be it might be too much for this cylinder cylinder to handle such a complicated sludges so the biggest difference to normal volute if you look at the volute duo is like you know we have two screws flying against each other and you can see that there is no red uh, circle there is no friction between the screw and the rings there is always a minimal clearance between those two mechanical parts of the machine so they never touch each other. There is no contact between them. And why? Because those moving rings are driven by external shaft up and down. This is the patented mechanism uh, of the moving rings. And you can see that what is very important is that one section goes up and another section of moving rings goes down. So this creates, as we call it, kind of like double cut. And uh, so you can see that the principle of this mechanical filter actually remains the same as for the classical volute. There are moving rings which are in constant move up and down, so they still prevent uh, the cylinder from blockage. They enable filtrate to escape the cylinder easily, and there are kind of uh, massaging, <laughs> I would say, the sludge in inside and uh, two screws in the middle of cylinders are more powerful to push through the sludge uh, through the cylinder to the to the end plate so it's much more i would say blocking proof much more blocking proof than the volute but you know of course it's not like completely blocking proof it is of course not possible but uh, we can talk about couple more times you know increased flexibility when it comes to possible blockage so this is the key thing when it comes to a volume duo and i hope that this mechanical principle is quite clear uh, so just to summarize that uh, this is how the cylinder uh, looks like we have twin screws i think it's clear externally driven moving rings yeah, there is one thing I forgot to, to mention. Uh, let me jump back one slide. Yes, here we go. Uh, so as you can see for normal volute, the, I would say speed of uh, moving rings movements, you know, are of course always following the speed of the screw, right? That's obvious. But for volute duo, we are actually able to drive the speed of the moving rings completely independently from the speed of the screws, because those are driven by independent power source. Uh, so it means that we can increase the speed of the moving rings if we want. So it gives us a lot of possibilities to fine tune the machine for the customer or respectively for the concrete application. This is a this is big benefit uh, for us as well. Yeah, so again, twin screws, external driven moving rings, double cutting uh, function, I think we managed to cover. What you might say is, you know, hey, come on, it is so complicated now, you know, the original volume is, is very simple, right? That's right, it looks like, but no worries, it is not that bad, I would say. The machine is designed for easy uh, maintenance. Uh, and as I said, thanks to the frictionless design, we don't consider moving rings and the screw as a consumable as a consumable anymore and by the way those parts are the most expensive uh, on the machine so uh, but moving uh, moving rings shaft and its components of course need some maintenance 
And believe me that our designers paid attention to, to make it easy. So we are talking about some bearings, some bushings, some guides, cups, and washers. These are the components of the, of the moving uh, rings shaft, driving shaft. All these components are cheap and easily replaceable as the complete machine is not needed to be disassembled. This is very important. The whole moving rings section, you can see this red box, oh, sorry, red, green, uh, green uh, box, rectangle. It can be lifted and uh, maintenance can be done without any need to touch the cylinder itself, like the moving and fixed rings. So, so yeah, it looks complicated. It has a couple more parts extra, that's right. But those parts are very cheap and very easily replaceable. This is just to give you a hint about the maintenance cost in time. So we have some, uh, we are comparing current volume, in this case, uh, FS132, which is somehow the equivalent of the new uh, volume duo, in this case, RVB241. So this is, by the way, the designation we are going to use. So our standard, you know, the most recent vo standard volume uh, models are FS and the volume duo, uh, they have this prefix R RVB and some number, uh, which is distinguishing or showing the, or telling you the, the size of the machine. So now uh, you can see on the screen, uh, you know, the, the cost reduction uh, compared to FS. It looks, it looks, I would say, maybe too good to be truth, but it's just because of the fact that you don't need to replace most expensive parts of the machine, which are moving rings and the screw. You remember, I was talking about performance deterioration in time when it comes to uh, volute and to volute duo. Uh, so as you can see on the graph, there are the red, the red line represents the performance deterioration of the volute screw press in time. It's kind of obvious that over time, the watering efficiency uh, decreases due to the gradual wear of the rings and the screw. It is very normal. Nobody can avoid that. This is how it is. And obviously, at some point, it is necessary to replace those key components uh, to achieve optimal results again in the sludge dewatering. Uh, the green line represents volume duo performance in time. Again, maybe it's looking too good to be true, but again, it is just because those key components are not varying compared to normal, normal uh, volume because there is no touch between the screw and the rings. There is no friction, there is no wear. So I would say in 20,000, of operation hours, we will not see any performance deterioration uh, when it comes to a volume to do. This is now, well, let's give you the kind of standard specification uh, of the machine. So uh, uh, you can see that uh, the machine has uh, 360 degrees covers. If it's needed, we can actually even uh, make a spec up for certain application with special seals on that. So kind of to prevent odor and these kind of things if it's happening, but already standard design has full cover. So there is no leakage of whatever uh, anywhere, uh, even if this design already a nice odor control exists. But as I said, we can even improve if it's needed. All the motors are standardly equipped with the frequency, variable frequency drive. So, you know, this is, this is our standard. Uh, smaller tank, smaller flocculation tank. I'm, I will be talking about, about that uh, later on. Uh, why it's smaller? Because it can be smaller to achieve the same flocculation efficiency and even better. Uh, but we uh, have to introduce uh, some special, not special, it's not special, but some, some mixing uh, devices, even if it's the, the static or dynamic uh, mixers. I will be talking about that later on. When it comes to control panel, as you know, 
uh, our all our standard volutes are equipped with HMIs. Uh, for volume duo, we will not standardly put the control panel on the tank, but we will always ask the customer what is the most convenient solution for you. Is it going to be on the machine on the tank, or is it going to be somewhere else? Uh, we will be very flexible when it comes to this. Uh, flocculation tank. Uh, so, so to, together with Volume Duo, we are introducing the new smaller flocculation tank equipped with static or respectively dynamic mixer. You can see the green dashed line, which is showing the normal size, normal size of the flocculation tank. And uh, with the new flocculation tank, we can achieve smaller footprint. That's kind of obvious for the for the picture. But as well, we can achieve the smaller polymer consumption, which is so important for OPEX uh, when talking about uh, sludge dewatering in general. So dynamic mixture really provides much better, or even static one for small units, uh, provides much better flocculation. Uh, than if we don't use it. And therefore, according to our tests, we can say that we are able to save from five to up to 25% of polymer consumption, which is, which is a lot. There is maybe worth it to mention, I should go one slide back. Yeah, this one I forgot to, to say. You can see that for the smaller, smallest uh, volume duo model, which is RVP241, we will be using static mixer. So in the static mixer, as you know, there is no really drive, active drive. So there is no a motor which is driving the mixing, but there is a static mixer inside. But for all the other models, all the other sizes, bigger sizes, we will be using dynamic mixer, which is equipped with the motor, which is actively driving the, the mixer. Yeah. Uh, there is a little nice thing when it comes to base of the cylinder. So uh, we have decided to implement as a standard the so-called split pan. So if customer wants, he or she can distinguish between the filtrate, which is coming from the thickening zone, which usually does not contain much solids, uh, because there is not much pressure applied on the sludge. And this filtrate can be derived somewhere as customer wants. And potentially the filtrate from the dewatering zone, which might contain more solids, uh, might be taken somewhere else. So this is just a very simple, elegant solution. There is a piece, there's a sheet of stainless steel the customer can use or, or don't have to, it depends. Uh, if they want to have better control over the filtrate quality. It is going to be standard, no fees, no specification upgrades needed. Now, just to give you the, the hint about the lineup of volume duo uh, dewatering presses. So as I said, there's going to be this prefix, we call it RVP uh, 241. As I said, this is the smallest unit. And then we have 501, 601, 701, 801, and 802. So what those numbers means. So the, the last digit represents the number of cylinders, right? So one, one cylinder, two, two cylinders. Each cylinder has two screws, as we described. And the first figures, actually, they show the diameter. So if, for example, RVP 501, it, it means that we have two cylinders, 250, which together create 500. So it's like 241 means that there are like, like there would be two cylinders, 120 each. 120, two means 200, uh, 240. So this is kind of the, des the des designation principle, just to imagine the size approximately. You can see estimated minimum and maximum throughput of the machine. And of course, you can see the crazy range. But you know, you know, this is how it is. Uh, for some sludges, let's say biological activated sludges uh, with really a lot of biological content, uh, sludge which is kind of difficult to dewater, a bit tricky to squeeze, 
you know, of course, the throughput is on the, on the lower scale. If the sludge is going to, for example, like, you know, mix between the waste activated sludge biological and the primary sedimentation sludge, for example, then we can, we can be on the higher scale on the, on the throughput table. So this is just to give you like some kind of hint idea about potential size of those machines. Uh, the biggest beast, RVP801, so it is actually like two cylinders of 801. So this is really big, big gun. Uh, let's put it this way. And you can see the electricity consumption. It is still very, very low, still being beneficial for the customers, of course, of course, compared to other dewatering technology, which are really consuming a lot of energy. And fortunately, nowadays, it pays a big role for customers, you know, making decision about the, the technology they are going, going to use. The role is still not that big as it should be, I think, but customers are paying much more attention to it than, than before. Pilot test results. I think this is something which uh, you uh, must be interested. Uh, of course, for us, this is the key thing. We have been testing the machine and we will be continue testing the machine especially on those complicated sludges, sludges. So please let me share with you some of our results. Uh, pilot test number one, uh, this was conducted in, conducted in the Czech Republic uh, with the REP241 uh, pilot pilot unit. We were, we were doing it in, in the chemical industry. It was a raw wastewater. It was very poisonous production, kyanid uh, production. Uh, you can see crazy high inorganic content. Uh, however, the concentration uh, of the sludge was kind of very normal, uh, 1 to 1.5%. Uh, and uh, we managed to achieve uh, 16 to 25% dryness of the cake with the throughput 13 to 20. You know, we always test our machine on different, I would say, setups, right? Maximum dryness of the cake, and we compromise the throughput. Yeah? Opposite, maximum throughput, and we compromise the dryness and we find some kind of balance in between together with the customer. So it, fit, it fits perfectly well. Uh, we were happy catalog throughput was achieved, no blockage at all. And this is kind of interesting, you know, uh, pilot test we did. We put GS132, which is the, I would say classic, this is classic volute uh, machine because we wanted to see how this machine will cope with the sludge. And we were able to dewater this sludge, but those machines had to be equipped with the rib rings, which is a special type of the moving rings. We had to apply high torque up motor and the end plate had to be completely open, not to create any extra additional pressure on the sludge. So we can say that, yes, we can use normal classic volute, but with the specification upgrades for this sludge, but it is not good to do so. It is much better to use volute duo because first of all, this sludge is a piece of cake for, for the dewatering, uh, for the dewatering press, volute duo. And long term, as we discussed, the maintenance cost for the for the customer is much more convenient in the long run. So, for example, in this case, it's clear choice. Uh, volute duo is better choice for this application. Capture rate, yeah. Even phosphorus uh, filtrate limit was reached. So this was a good result. Then we had another one. Uh, we had a trip together with our distributor in Sweden, and we did some pilot tests at, at, the, at the meat production. This was meat rendering. I am very happy that I was not there at the time, but it was winter. My colleagues said that if it's a summer, it would be really not nice place to be, honestly speaking. However, the test was uh, successful. Uh, in this case, you know, inorganic content was kind of not, 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 not crazy high, 8 to 16%, but the sludge concentration was rather high, 7%. And the duo was doing fantastically well. Uh, dryness, you can see uh, almost up to 30%. And uh, throughput wise, 15 to 18 kilos of dry solids per hour. Again, the smallest. RVP241 unit, because this is what we have as a pilot unit. It's kind of easy to move around this, this machine. Capture rate, solid, 
catalog throughput achieved, no blockage at all. This was straightforward. Another visit and pilot test we did uh, in Sweden, and it was the it, it is a paper production. It is a base activated sludge with the higher fiber content, 20% to 24%. Not crazy high. I believe that we would be able to devote this sludge, maybe with standard volume, spec up for this uh, complicated sludge. But again, volume duo is a perfect fit in here. First of all, you can see the results. You can see some pictures, how the, how the cake looked like. Uh, throughput wise, all okay. But of course, you can see the beautiful flocculation, right? Perfect separation, sludge and water, strong, solid uh, flocks, and the filtrate, you know, it was like capture rate almost 100%. Uh, it was, this was very, very perfect. The last one uh, I would like to share with you it is, it is, uh, it was done in Italy. Uh, again, with our with our uh, distributor uh, in Italy, uh, it was a mixed uh, digested and waste activated biological sludge. Uh, the mixed ratio was ninety percent digested and ten percent uh, waste activated sludge. Inorganic content fourteen uh, percent, fiber content twenty eight percent. Still not completely crazy high, but it's already a challenge for for the machine. Uh, concentration 2.1, nothing crazy, I would say, for this uh, for this type of uh, sludge, definitely not. Uh, dryness of the cake around 20%, throughput 15 to 26 kilograms, catalog throughput achieved, uh, no blockage at all. And uh, we used our distributors pilot unit at that time and, uh, next to the new volume duo. And really, it got blocked in a couple of minutes. Basically, this is the typical sludge, which is problematic for normal normal volumes. Yeah. So uh, we just wanted to, to to show it, even if we knew that it's going to end up like that. Like we will block the cylinder, and the show will be over. Capture rate again very high, flocculation beautiful. So it worked very very well. I'm coming. Yes, I'm coming uh, to the end of the of the presentation slightly. So, I would like to offer you the chance if you will be around and you would like to meet uh, our new Volute Duo in person. Uh, there will be a possibility in Polytech in France, uh, 12 to 15 of October this year. Hopefully, COVID will not stop us uh, going there, and we would like to attend uh, Aquatech in Amsterdam, Netherlands which is going to take place uh, 2nd to 5th of November this year. And there will be uh, probably possibility to see the Volume Duo in live, in person, in Ecomondo in Italy, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the one week before Amsterdam Aquatic. So this, this may happen. And uh, before I will, I will move to your questions, you have probably noticed that we have changed. Uh, we have changed uh, the logo a bit. Uh, there was a need for that uh, because uh, we are not dis discontinuing volume. Uh, we are just really extending the range of our machine and extending the range of sludges we are able to evolve every touch of machine, machine to give you to give you a powerful, powerful, easy to use, uh, easy to operate. Uh, weapon for sludge dewatering. And you can see those circles, right? So the volute represents one circle, which means cylinder equipped with one screw and volute duo, which is like two screw, but still one cylinder, but it represents those two, two circles somehow. And so for easier imagination what the machine is about. Thank you very much again. Uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, I hope you manage to survive this crazy COVID era uh, as, as possible. I hope it will not come back in the autumn. I hope it will give us more opportunities to meet physically uh, wherever you are. And please uh, stay in touch with us uh, and uh, keep dewatering. It's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.